Hello, Hitting Family. Here are two ideas I want to share with you today. Number one, why does our hitting community continue to ignore concepts that explain hitting timing and hitting spatial alertness? Number two, why I believe teaching hitting from a non-baseball perspective will actually accelerate your son's hitting development. Okay, so let's go back to this question. Why is our culture ignoring concepts and principles that revolve around hitting timing and hitting spatial alertness? And here's my short answer. The hitting experts in our culture have not thought of a way to accurately measure hitting timing. Not only haven't they figured out a way to measure good hitting timing, they haven't figured out the variables that produce consistent hitting timing. So when you can't accurately explain the variables that make up hitting timing, you're obviously going to be challenged in trying to measure hitting timing. Personally, I have been studying hitting timing since I was a baseball player back in the 1970s. I've got further along in my development of understanding hitting timing as a player in the late 1980s. During the 1990s, I fell into the dark pit or the dark hole that most coaches fall into when they first become hitting coaches, and that is to try to teach hitting from the perspective of biomechanics. For 13 years, I taught hitting like most other hitting coaches, and I overanalyzed the swing mechanics. Around 2007, I finally woke up, and I began to teach hitting not from the coach's perspective, but from the player's perspective. I taught hitting from the perspective of a baseball player, a baseball hitter. And I embarked on a journey of studying and researching hitting timing and hitting spatial alertness. Now this leads me to the second point I want to make in this video. I know what I just said, and that's I teach hitting from a baseball player, baseball hitter's perspective. And in order to simplify it for a baseball player, I've learned it's easier to explain hitting from a non-baseball player's perspective. To teach hitting at face value for what it really is. Before I go on, the odd thing is, this is how we teach fielding. This is how we teach outfield play. This is how we teach hockey and tennis and basketball. Those actions and those sports are almost from a non-athletic viewpoint. And here it is, it's this simple. Hockey, the puck is over there, now the puck is right here. Soccer ball. The soccer ball is over there, now the soccer ball is right here. Tennis, the ball is on that side, now the ball is on this side. Everything I just explained to you has to deal with space. The, the ball, the puck, the object is going from one space to another space. When I'm playing the infield, the ball's over there, now it's right here. Now, when I'm a hitter, why does it change? The non-baseball person is watching the pitcher throw the ball and says to himself, the pitcher lets go of the ball, the ball flies into the air towards the batter. The batter takes his bat and intersects the space the ball is moving into with his bat. For the most natural elite hitters, this is how simple hitting is. Just listen to Barry Bonds. He says he just intersected the ball with his bat. It was like, all I tried to do was catch the ball with my bat. I don't care if you throw 100 miles an hour. 
I don't care if you throw 120 miles an hour. There's a catcher behind home plate, and that catcher catches that ball every time with a glove. Only thing I did was change the object from glove to a bat. And all I gotta do is catch it. From glove to a bat. And all I gotta do is catch it. In other interviews, he says it like this. The catcher has to catch the ball. I tried to catch the ball with my bat before it got to the catcher. And this is a completely different hitting mentality than what our hitting culture is programming our hitters to do. Our sons, our players are being inundated with launch angle, more bat speed, bat speed to contact point. And the list goes on and on and on. Our kids are being inundated with this data-driven research and trying to have better measurable scores so they can be put higher on the perfect game list and PBR list and hopefully get a better college scholarship and be looked at from pro scouts. And the truth is, real experienced baseball people know these measurables don't always reflect the game player, the player who hits well in the games. Our players are being programmed to believe that the better bat speed and the better launch angles and the farther I hit the ball will make me a better hitter in the game. And that's their hitting mentality. Be violent with the ball. Hit the ball as far as you can. And one of the greatest hitters of all time told you his mentality wasn't that at all. It was just to intersect the ball. It was just to cut the ball off in the space it was moving towards. As easy as it sounds, this hitting mentality delves into the theories of neuroscience hitting. And that's what I teach players. I teach players neuroscience of hitting and I teach it at a third grade level to pro players, to college players, and to youth players alike. And guess what? It works. Players begin to hit better when it counts the most in a live game. Do what I do. Stop ignoring the reality. Start training hitting at what it is at face value. I'm Dave Kirilov, languageofhitting.com. Give me a call this week. Send me an email this week. Send me a text message this week. And together, let's start accelerating your son's hitting development. Knowledge creates confidence.